Welcome back, folks. Episode three, Patrick Gale Show, Albany State basketball exclusive show for you, where you get all of the first hand information from the man himself, Patrick Gale, about Albany State Golden Ring basketball, which is off to a hot start. As we called it last week, we spoke to this, we said 2 0, and what happened? They are 2 0. And here's the heels on the screen right there, Coach Patrick Gale. Good to talk to you about 2 0, brother. <laughs> <laughs> what's going on jr i appreciate you man you you spoke it into existence so you must be doing something right man so keep doing what you're doing man we need all the support and prayers we can get man i appreciate you yes indeed and it's funny coach you know i was keeping tabs on them scores throughout the weekend i'm like okay friday night got the job done and sunday got the job done so i so yes we are <laughs> we start off the right way and it's a Great thing you doing. And so let me ask you, man, uh, for you, um, seeing your guys come out and play well against Mississippi College, you know, tied at halftime and turn it on second half. How did it make you feel, man? Seeing your guys step up. Definitely, definitely proud of my guys. Um, we we got a a lot of things we gotta work on. But like I told them, you know, it's it's much better to learn after a win, you know, than a loss. So, you know, we 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 um got in the uh, film room the next morning and uh, addressed a lot of things. And then we had a great practice, great shoot around Sunday and they were ready to go Sunday. So they, they responded well. And, um, you know, I'd be, you know, definitely remiss if I didn't bring up the the success that the whole conference is having um, shout out to Clark Atlanta. They, they did a great job sweeping the Gulf South as well. The, uh, Coach George is doing an excellent job with his staff. Um, shout out to Kentucky State. They got a big win against the conference uh, uh, that they were challenging. Shout out to Benedict. Um, you know, Coach Maddox, he does, does a great job. He's been doing it since he got to Benedict. And, and they went undefeated against the Sunshine State Conference. So, you know, LeMoyne Owen got a big win against um, uh, the Gulf South Conference as well. So I'm really, really proud of the SIAC right now. No doubt, you all are definitely playing well, playing well, and what's crazy about the SIAC, you all have conference play coming up here real soon. <laughs> it hits you fast, the SIAC. <laughs> it's, no, it's no really true ramp up like it is in D1. It's going to hit you fast on 27. It, it does, up. it does, definitely. <laughs> you know, and, and Coach, you got, I, I saw when you held those guys, Mississippi College, to defensive, 30% shooting. I mean, that's good, you know. That's good. The only thing I that I know you probably as a coach, like just just that's a play without foul. You know, <laughs> the free throw free guy was probably <laughs> a little too much for your liking, but yes, oh, yes. definitely great. <laughs> yes, yes. But we that's what we, we our calling card is defense. Um, you know, we we uh, a lot of guys um will have issues with me in preseason and when we start practice because they really don't understand that we're a defensive team. So that's what we do. That's, you know, we, we're going to make sure that we put our best forward, our foot forward uh, on the defensive end. And then, you know, the ball is fickle, man. Sometimes it drops, sometimes it doesn't. But defense is all about effort and and understanding your, your assignment and understanding, you know, communication and being connected and understanding the game plan. So, you know, I was proud of them with their effort on defense. No doubt. And you know what? Like you said, even when you're not having the ball go down, defense and rebounding and, and hustling, all those loose balls, all those, those half the time out plays, all those special situations and the little things come out of when the because do we know we know it's really it's make or miss, but those things can really affect you when it's not going that get out for this and turn over. Let's rest a live ball to get out there, you defend the well, get easy layup. So you don't have to worry about the jump shots not falling that much much. So I think when young men learn that aspect of the basketball. Makes it much easier for you as a coach and as a, as a team. That's right. And there's some great, I mean, we had some great players. To me, um, not just the Gulf South Conference Players of the Year, but even national um contenders for, you know, all Americans that 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 um showed up uh this past weekend. So, you know, you're you're gonna play great defense and they're still gonna get there. So you have to be able to play great team defense and you gotta be able to get stops, you know, when when you need it the most. And you know, I was proud that, that our guys figured out a way to do that. No doubt. And, and then just about um secure potique. Um 18 and three against Mississippi College. 
Uh, talk about his development, what you've seen in that young man, and how he's really helped lead you in that game. And also, with Mr. Wallace going, uh, you know, with 15 and 12 as well. Well, love, love both of them. They're both the young. Uh, Shakur um, has three years to play. Um, he he played um, out of high school. Out of he's from Orlando. Played at Bethune Cookman. So another HBCU transfer. And um, Blaze Wallace. He's a freshman. And um, you know what I love about Blaze is that he's been coming to my prospect camps. You know for for two years before he signed with us, and he signed early with us. And you know he's from Tallahassee, from a clay school. And great family, um, love his mom, great young man, very mature, not just physically, but mentally for his age. And, you know, I, I think, you know, we're going to have a really bright future with those two guys. Our point guard being Shakur and Blaze being kind of our foreman. And, you know, Shakur is a player, man. And I told him, you know, early in the preseason, man, you got a chance to be really, really good. And I think he's embracing it still. You know, we, we clash a little bit because I'm more of a defensive guy and, you know, got to get got to get him to lock in a little bit more defensively. And then Blaze, you know, he's playing a lot of minutes for us as a freshman and he's handled it well. So really proud of both both those guys, really proud of their their energy and their effort. And I love coaching them. No doubt, Blaze coming in for two games, you know, with 15, 21. Like, my man is getting it in. My man getting it in first two games of his career as a freshman. So, you know, that is a bright future. You can make an impact day one on your team, whether you're freshman. Absolutely. That's, that's, Absolutely. That's, and and what and what I love about both of them, by the way, great students. Um, Blaze is a really good student, not taking a traditional 12 or 15 credit load, taking a heavy load um, this first semester and handling it, you know, with like a breeze. Um, very, very good student. Shakur as well. Shakur is a very, very good student as well. So proud of them, just not just as basketball players, but as young men. And, you know, we talked about this before, Coach Gale, how – that degree is very important. It's so important to finish with the degree, getting a young black man the education, because we all know once basketball stops, you got to have education to get, get you a job. Absolutely. You got to have a skill set beyond the ball or, Absolutely. or the field. So the fact that he's doing that already, um, 18 credit hours first semester, I couldn't do that. I, I was not here first semester. <laughs> I, could, I couldn't do it. I didn't do it either. It took me a, took me a little bit to graduate. I'm glad I graduated, but but um, you know, when I look at young men that do that, man, that and um, you know, I meet with all my freshmen um three times a week just to make sure everything is good. And when I meet with him, man, we our meeting is always the shortest because he's he's got everything, you know, taken care of as far as off the court. You know, very, very well mannered, head on his shoulders, but tough. To, knows how to be tough on the court, and is really, you know, well mannered and calm off the court. So I, I love Blaze. I'm so happy that we have him here. And um, Shakur is a young man that, you know, I I love Shakur because he believes in himself. You know, he he wanted to be here, and 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 we got him here. We didn't sign him early. We kind of signed him later. And he, he was, you know, a great, great, great addition to us. And think about what you're doing with these young men, man. Like, it's, it's very amazing to see that, that they wanted to be there. And it's, it's really important about your prospect camp. So, what, can you kind of explain that, Coach Gale, about how important it is at prospect camp to touch these young sure. men, them get these young men to see who you are, see what Coach White's about, what you build at RPG State, so they can say, hey, this is a place where I feel is home to me, and I know these guys to take care of me. You know, what, what I'm proud about, you know, with the prospect camp that we're doing, see, a lot of parents don't, and I don't want to speak about other programs. Uh, I can only speak about mine, but a lot of parents are not aware of how important it is to get their students, to get their sons on the campus, you know, of any college. So what I love about my prospect camp is our players work the camp, first and foremost. So, you know, they interact with the students or with the prospects that come in. And we've done it the last two years during our football homecoming. So the parents and the students have that atmosphere already. The campus is buzzing. You know, there was an alumni fish fry that my administration was so kind to invite, you know, our parents to. But what I'm proud of is that since I've been here um, having this prospect camp, we have three current guys on the roster that have attended not just one, multiple prospect camps 
But number two, we got about four or five guys that are playing Division One basketball that have attended our elite or prospect camps. And that's what I'm more the most proud of. Um, most notably, uh, uh, Simeon Cottle, you know, who's playing now at Kennesaw State. He attended our elite camp and our prospect camp, you know. So I'm really, really proud. And I think we have some guys that came this year that – are are going to be division one prospects because they're they're uh we not just have seniors we also have juniors and you know a few sophomores so you know we have a lot of talent and my thing is you can't say that you're not being recruited if you're not going to these camps that are on college campuses it makes the the most sense to go to not only the college campus that senior community, but you're looking at a division one prospect camp, like that's gonna land you a division one scholarship. And you don't even realize an NAIA or a D2 or even a D3 camp can land you a division one scholarship. Cause it's all about talent and coaches speak and coaches go to every division. So I, I really wanna, you know, implore parents to to get their kids on college campuses for these camps. And coach, you said you said something so profound because I knew about Tennessee State because of going to a football camp there and basketball camp there as a kid. Yep. That's how because yep. uh I remember Anthony Mason got rest of soul and Carlos Rogers. Yep. I mean, it's those yep. Are, that's my friend of the TSU with Frank, Frank, Frank Allen, who was the coach at the time. Yep. So that's, but it, that's how I ended up going. It was I was still put on the camp. Same with Clark. And you I, still remember those experiences of meeting, you know, Mace and, and, and uh, Carlos Rogers, right? Yes. See? I have those t shirts in my, in my treasure chest downstairs where they signed for me. Exactly. Exactly. And that's what it's all about. So, you know, I, I, I always tell my guys, if you want to be a lawyer, why are you hanging around people that aren't lawyers? You know, you want to be a college basketball player. You need to be hanging around college basketball players. So, you know, that's one of the team bonding events. We get more out of it as a team than I think some of the high school prospects do, because first of all, I've got guys on the team that were there. So it brings back memories of them like coach. Wow. I remember when I came to your prospect camp and it was so cool. You had your players. Now I'm a player and I tell them you got to pay it forward. You got to mm -hmm. You got to now teach those young kids what it takes. And the conversations when I walk around the gym that I hear is amazing, you know, because it's a, a young athlete talking to an older athlete. And I don't think the parents really understand that is priceless you know, that you can't get advice from a coach more so than you can get advice from an actual college student athlete. And that's priceless. And, you know, for me, think about this, Coach Gail. I'm a football camp and I'm with Ed Tutal Jones, Richard Dent, Claude Humphrey, who played for Atlanta Falcons. You know, these guys are from Tennessee State. So Joe Gilliam as well, who's Terry Bradshaw's backup, that's done better than Bradshaw. You know, as a young kid, <laughs> I'm going to do these legends. Yep. And it struck me as a kid that I felt more at home at Tennessee State, State than I did at Clark or Morehouse because I said, it's not my speed. You know, it was like, so even going to the Braves baseball camp, been around Greg Maddox, and Fred, my favorite player was Fred McGriff, David Justice. So yep. these key people put into me at camp. So these camps are so important to meet people. And I was even, I'm almost 40 years old now, but it's still, stuck with me all them years ago as it should as it should i mean it's it's amazing when you can and i tell my guys when they're not going to see these nba players they're not going to see these high major players they're going to see you and and you to them you're 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 the example of i can get to that level because college basketball i don't care what level college basketball is awesome at every level Winning at college basketball is awesome at every level. So I'm not a big D1, and I'm not a big, oh, he plays professional. But you're, you're an athlete, period, you know? So when our guys are, you know, talking to these high school prospects that want to play college basketball, it's, it's such a wealth, you know, of advice. And, and like you said, the experience that you get, just the little things of knowing, you know what, I can make it. I can get there. 
you know. So I think that's the biggest thing that I'm I'm a big advocate of. You know, every camp that I work, I always tell, you know, parents, get your 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 sons on college campuses. Don't think that you have to go to a big time camp to get your son a priceless experience. And Coach Gear, you know what's funny is for me is when I talk to Coach Allen today or Coach Esposito, uh, who's at Kansas City now, Coach Rogers, like they, they, they're they happy because they remember me as a little kid. And now look what I'm yep. doing now. And they're so yep. proud. And, like they, I helped this. So I, I said, you all showing me love as a kid from Atlanta just up here for a week. It yep. stuck with me. And that's and and that's and that's and they paid it forward. I mean, that's the biggest thing because what you're doing, the spark was when you met them, you know, and that's and that's what it's about. And and I mean, you you said you're almost 40, so we're talking about 20 years later, you know, you know, more than 20 years later. That's awesome, man. That's about awesome. 30 years later. <laughs> I met them as a, like five, six year old. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. And again, your parents, your parents, God bless your parents because they 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 did the right thing, getting you exposed to that, and that's what it's all about. Yeah, because you know, growing up where I grew up at, where in Atlanta, like they wanted me to, to experience stuff. So they, in the summertime, they would put me with a relative on the bus to go to places to get me out of that environment, so I can right. pursue something. And those Correct. things stuck with me. And he's like, it's very important to have parents who really care and involved and really understand because getting going out, leaving Atlanta, going these camps at five, six, six, six years old, meeting these people now who are who now now I'm of age now. They see what I've done. It's like it's amazing. You should see how Coach Up at Kansas City when he sees me. He's like he was one of my campers. He's so happy to tell somebody one of his campers many years ago. <laughs> well, 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 I have to I have to bring this story up. You know, God God bless my mom. You know, that's in heaven right now. My father that's in heaven right now. But I remember when I was a junior in high school. And I was um, in high school in South Florida, and they had something called Boy State that the American Legion had sponsored. And I was a rising, I want to say a rising senior, and just so happened to be the New York Knicks. I was a big New York Knicks fan, you know, from being from New York. If you're not a Knicks fan, you're probably a Jordan fan back when I grew up in, you know, those times. So it was either one of the two. But, you know, they were in the finals against the Rockets. And I'm being told I'm going to Tallahassee to go to something called Boy State. And I was pissed the whole week being there. I never knew. And I was, you know, maybe about right before I turned 17. Well, fast forward to I'm in my maybe late 20s. And I'm seeing that Boy State is actually where most presidents have attended. So basically, it's like a... Um, you know, we're on the campus of Florida State. We're staying in the dorms. So it's basically um, a, a, a kind of model uh, government that for a week you're in government. And I, I got um, nominated for that because of my, my high school grades. And me being, you know, so into basketball, I didn't care about stuff like that. But my parents, you know, they're they're Jamaican, so they they're more into the academics than anything. And they're like, I don't care if you don't want to go, you're going. And I'm so happy that they made me go to that and made me get exposed to that. So again, you talked about your parents exposing you and getting you out of your comfort zone in your environment. That's the only way you grow. And to this day, I couldn't thank my parents enough for forcing me to go to something like that. And folks, I want to say something to our Airbnb coach, Gil. He's I shared with him that my mother's Jamaican too, have Jamaican, which made him so happy. Good <laughs> <laughs> job, you, Bob. I love you. <laughs> Look, I, I wish, uh, hey, man, that's a blessing that you can even talk to your mom, man. There's nothing worse than, than um, you know, uh, seeing your mom, you know, her life uh, slip away. So uh, to, to your mom and to all moms out there, man, that's a blessing. And Coach Gill, you got a game coming up next Monday before we next convene on the 21st against uh, Georgia Southwestern in America, Georgia. I know about this, too, believe it. I know about America, Georgia. About oh, America what you know about America, JR. That's uh-huh. a, little bit, it's a little bit out of the, the zone of Atlanta, man. What you know about that, man? I, I have that's, sorry that's that, Southwest though. Georgia, man. What you know about Southwest Georgia? I know about Tifton, too, brother. I've had a Tifton <laughs> shawty and America shawty in my life. Airport Valley, with you. <laughs> 
Hey, I'll go my way outside with Georgia. Hey, man, you, 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 you get around, huh? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, sir. But tell me about that matchup. Good matchup for you guys, Southwest Georgia, man. To good, hopefully you have a great crowd because your crowd comes up there and it'll be a good battle, hopefully, man. Man, let me tell you something. Georgia Southwestern playing in the dome, the storm dome, is 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 tough. It's a very tough environment to win. Um, coach Combs is is again another great coach, great, great staff there. They do a great job, recruit a lot of Southwest Georgia kids, a lot of Georgia kids. They do an awesome job in their recruiting. They get tough kids. They get kids that, you know, compete hard. They play in a very tough league in the Peach Belt. It's going to be a great matchup. You know, a lot of the kids that they have on their roster and the kids that I have on my roster are kind of kids that we both are kind of recruiting. So it's going to be a great matchup. And, and, um, it's going to be our first road test. So, you know, we'll we'll have to be ready for it. And I know they'll be ready for us to come in. So it's going to be it's going to be packed. It definitely is going to be packed. They love basketball there in America. So it's, it's definitely going to be a great environment. 7 p.m. Um, next Monday. And good thing you have uh, these all your days to prepare, too. This is great. These all these prep days you have. Because we're we're definitely gonna be prepared. As a matter of fact, one of my um seniors came in and asked me if I started breaking down film yet. So we're definitely um we're definitely thinking about them from 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 already from the start. And coach, uh, please uh to let us know who are your two players on the HBCU All Star game. Watch this man. Yes, yes, big 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 up to um uh, you know Travis Williams. He started the HBCU All Star game. It has just grown, you know, from its inception. He talked about he talked to us, you know, in SIAC, you know, about it, and, and thank God for for what he's doing. So I got to shout out the the same senior I was just referring to, Reginald James. He's on the watch list. And Mr. Jameer Moore, he's also a, a grad senior. He's on the watch list. So, you know, I'm happy for both of those guys. And I know those guys are, you know, humble and focused. But, you know, they they definitely are are excited about, you know, having a chance to play in this HBCU All-Star game. And we'll have Reginald Jameer on, on the, one of these future Patrick Gale shows to discuss that their career at Albany State and, and be on that watch list is very Prominent thing to be on that watch list for the All Star Game during the Final Four for the the Big D One games is always on CBS as well. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And Reginald actually is um an HBCU transfer. He came in from Coppin State, so he's not only a one, but he's a two two uh, HBCU uh, attendees. So he he loves his HBCU from uh, Trenton, Jersey. No doubt. Jersey guy, stand up. Jersey guy, Jersey guy, Jersey guy. I'm from New York, so I always tell Jersey guys, y'all a little different. Y'all a little different, but he's, but, but I love, love my Jersey guys. Coach, you're going to laugh at this. I've had two fiancés, one from Montclair and one from uh, East Orange. <laughs> and Jay East Trusted, Orange. baby. <laughs> now, now, the thing about East Orange, Jr. You know, like I say, I, I've had a, I've coached a lot of Jersey guys. East Orange, man, a lot of times people will say they're from East Orange, but they're really from from the bricks. They're really from Newark. So you do, are you sure she's from East Orange? I'll do a better. She is right on the line. Born in Newark, but living in East Orange. Right mm -hmm. on the line, See, though. See, I told you. I told you. So she's, she's right on the she, line, living in East Orange, though. <laughs> for, for you, for you, she had to keep it clean cut. I'm from East Orange, but she she probably knew her. She probably from the bricks. <laughs> yeah, just born on the bricks. Yep, 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 yep. Brick City. So you know, but I, I, listen, man, Jersey, Jersey's a. I love Jersey. It's right, right next door. Tough place. Um, really good basketball players come from New Jersey, man. So I love recruiting New Jersey. And folks, I got one to tell you all as well. Don't let like the coach Gill and the men's basketball team go to the Albany State Rams basket, men's basketball fund. Put me memo, men's basketball. Make sure you donate to that foundation for those guys. Memo, man. any any donations, you know, on the check, it, it, in order for us to, to be able to um, accept it and use it, it has to go. The memo has to say uh, men's basketball foundation. Um, and we appreciate 
and 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 accept any you know donation like like uh my ad dr kelly says no donation is too small um there's a lot of things that get overlooked you know that people don't think about when running a, a program a, a basketball program at this level so any any donation would be appreciated and 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 i'm glad you brought that up jr um i would like to conclude by saying thank you to all those that have donated to our program now they don't get they don't show us who donated exactly, but I do know some people that reached out to me, and I do know that we've had some people donate with our uh, giving campaign uh, in our last uh, show that we that we aired. So thank you to everybody, and we hope that we can prove you know worthy. Uh, we hope to keep this thing going, and just know that we have some great young men that work really hard on and off the court, and really appreciate you know all donations. 100% well folks that concludes episode 3 of the Patrick Gale show we'll come back next Tuesday with a special guest as well so look forward to episode 4 Coach Gale and I look forward to talking to his brother so keep this week up keep this great week going coach practice some hard man get them ready for America's on Monday I hope we have a great, great report on Tuesday <laughs> JR man come on now you can't you can't what, what you gonna claim it now man you, you claimed yes, it I claimed last it. time I got a great claim report it. yes it's gonna be 3-0 there it. we yeah. go there we go, JR. Three and there oh, we yes. go. Three and there oh, we yes, go. Yes, sir. Uh, but again, what what did it take? It take it, it took you doing what you're supposed to as well. So uh, keep doing what you're doing as well. Yes, hey coach, we got that Jamaicans that that Jamaican pride in us both, coach. So you know that. There you go. You, there you, you go. You, 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 hey, hey. So I'm twenty five you, you, you were my brother before, but now. You might really be my first. Hey, the 25% you make making course through my veins. Hey, we, we, we just we, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, hey, make sure you give your mom a big hug and kiss, man. That's that's awesome, man, that that uh, we just found that out about each other. But again, if it weren't for this platform, man, we wouldn't even know that. So this has been fun. This has been great. And I, I can't thank you enough. Same here, coaches. Likewise, folks, check out the office. They go to go to Rams on Twitter as well. ASU go to Rams MB on the X and Instagram. Just get it.